It's been two years since Vladimir Putin launched his full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And the fighting on the front line seems as intense as ever. We see footage that shows artillery strikes on trenches, dead soldiers, burnt out tanks and army vehicles. But in fact, the front lines have remained fairly static since 2022. Russia initially made gains almost all the way up to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. And Vladimir Putin claimed to annex four regions in Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson. But Ukraine launched a large counteroffensive that year and retook much of the territory, including the city of Kherson, and also pushed Russian troops out of much of the region of Kharkiv. Since then, we've seen grinding fighting in cities like Bakhmut and Avdivka, but many of the gains have still been incremental. So there are a couple of reasons why this is happening. One is drones. Both sides are using drones extensively in order to monitor the battlefield and more and more in order to launch precision attacks. That's why we keep seeing footage like this, a Russian attempt at an advance in Kharkiv. We see the Ukrainians launch drones and the Russians being forced to retreat. Most of these drones are FPV, or first person view, and they allow the operator to control the drone using a remote control, much like he's in a video game. We can see in this footage, released by Ukraine in September, of a drone searching through a wood for Russian positions. Finally, we see the drone as it moves through the trees, identify a Russian position and detonate. We already see both sides trying to develop countermeasures to protect their troops from drones. In this video, we can see a Russian tank has a cage on top of it. And the cage is supposed to intercept so that the drone doesn't hit the tank itself. While this has been happening on the front lines, both sides develop capabilities to strike deep within each other's territory. Since the beginning of the year, we've seen Russia launch strikes using cruise missiles and drones that have attacked energy infrastructure and have also hit residential blocks inside the country. At the same time, Ukraine has been developing long-range drones that have let them carry out attacks against targets like a Russian gas facility on the Baltic Sea, and also to launch seaborne attacks against the Russian Navy in the Black Sea. This video, released earlier this year by Ukraine, shows what was thought to be Ukrainian maritime drones attacking and possibly sinking a Russian corvette. If confirmed, this would be the first sinking of a warship at sea by maritime drones, marking a major advancement in the use of this kind of technology in war. So the widespread use of advanced technology like drones, along with other factors, has led to a high number of casualties on both sides. The people now being brought up are mainly being trained to hold the lines at the very least, and both sides are more focused on defense than offense. In this video, we can see Ukraine setting up defenses near the city of Kupiansk in northern Ukraine, and it effectively shows that Ukraine is going on the defense right now. But both sides aren't just running low on people, they're running low on ammunition as well. Russia has had to ramp up domestic production, and also to go abroad to North Korea, in order to buy millions of more shells. Ukraine, meanwhile, has had to look toward its Western partners, Europe and the United States, to find the artillery shells it needs to keep fighting as well. So while all these factors mean that it's unlikely that we're going to see a breakthrough on the battlefield, it doesn't necessarily mean that this war is at a stalemate. We see both sides seeking to put their economies on a war footing. And that's a situation that both countries can only exist in for just so long. The economic pressures of the war and also domestic politics may ultimately determine which side is able to outlast the other.